Okay. Now, uh, if you see the previous recorded video which I have uploaded on the YouTube channel, you can see this is our next lecture from our uh, as a continuation of our previous lecture. Now, those who have seen the recorded video, they can only understand this part. Okay. So, if you have not seen the previous video, then uh, after this lecture, you can see the previous video when you get the time, because now this is your preparation time. So afterwards, you can see that. Okay, so good morning, all of you. And uh, we are continuing with uh, our next lecture from the unit three. And uh, as all of you know, the name of our uh, unit number three is the language translator. And in this unit, we're studying about the phases of compiler. And in the phases of compiler already, uh, three, four lecture already we have conducted. And this is the lecture number fifth. So in this lecture, today we'll see about the, uh, what exactly is the next phase of compiler. Okay, and uh, try to understand it. So what exactly mean by the phases of compiler that already in the previous lectures already number of times I have explained you. Still once again, I am repeating it, the phases uh, in the physical classes, we have discussed this point also. So phases are nothing but the different stages in the compilation different uh, what we can say is, uh, stages when you uh, compile your source program and how your source program get processed step by step that are nothing but the considered as a phases in the compiler okay so compiler mainly if you see in the case of the higher level language like c c++ java and other languages also there is a utilization of language translator as a compiler and we are just studying about how exactly the compilation process happens in details okay and uh, in that already uh, in the previous lecture also i explained you there are the two main phases of the compilation one is the analysis phase and second as a synthesis phase and currently we are discussing about the analysis phase of compiler okay and in the analysis phase also uh, some initial phases already we have discussed like we have discussed the two phases before this lecture one is the lexical analyzer and second is the syntax analyzer. And uh, as you can see here, compilation process is nothing but the sequence of phases or the sequence of sub process. Uh, when your program get converted into the um, low level language from the higher level language. So basically the use of compiler is nothing but the converting your source program into the machine program or converting your uh, high level language program into the low level language program. And while the compiler is doing this task, there is a lot of activities or the different steps has to be performed, different sub process has to be performed. And that sub process we are considering as a phases. So you can see in this figure also, each phases take the uh, input from the previous phase and uh, try to convert into the output form. So here lexical analysis taking the input as your source program and converting it into the tokens here you can see. And this token is given as a out, uh, input to the next phase of compiler that is nothing but our syntax analyzer. What exactly the role of syntax analyzer? What exactly the role of lexical analyzer? For that, you have to see the previous videos. So already I have explained the lexical analyzer role is nothing but the generation of tokens and send that token to the next phase of compiler that is nothing but the syntax analyzer. Syntax analyzer receive the token as an input. Okay, and process that input as a tokens from that it try to make some sentence and check whether that sentence is the syntactically correct or not. And for that it uh, generate the parse tree or the syntax tree. So syntax tree or the parse tree is considered as a output of the syntax analyzer. So if the parse tree or the syntax tree can be generated successfully, the meaning of that is what the particular sentence which you have written in your program, the expression which you have written in your program is syntactically correct. So these are all the part in detail in the previous lecture I have explained. Okay, you can refer to the previous video for that. Now, so likewise, uh, there are the different phases. First is the lexical, then syntax, then third is a semantic analyzer regarding which today we are going to do the discussion. And next is the intermediate code, then uh, code optimization, then code generation. These are the different phases. So 
so this is the uh, you can see this uh, uh, diagram which you can refer for the lexical analysis where you can easily see whenever the lexical analyzer get the request from the parser parser is the another in name for our lexical syntax analyzer okay so whenever the lexical analyzer get the request here you can see the sequence number 1 i have shown whenever the parser send request to the lexical analyzer that lexical analyzer read your source program second point here and then lexical analyzer send the tokens to the parser so this is our first phase that is the lexical analysis so in the second phase you can see the parser or the syntax analyzer after receiving that tokens generate the parse tree so if the parse tree can be generated successfully it means the syntax of your particular expression or the sentence is correct but if the parse tree cannot be generated then there is a different kind of syntactical errors can be generated now related with the each phase of compiler like for example first phase different lexical errors are there related with the second phase parser or the syntax analyzer also there are the different kind of syntax errors are generated okay that already you can i have explained in the previous videos now while uh, lexical analysis syntax analysis or the parser uh, processing your source program so every time they uh, update your symbol table and also utilize the symbol table for doing the different kind of analysis okay so this these two things already in the previous lectures i have covered now today we are going to discuss about our third phase of compiler okay that is nothing but our semantic analysis now you can see uh, whenever the source program is written by the programmer consider yourself as a programmer user so that program which is uh, being written by the user or the programmer that program you write into the higher level language you can consider here your higher level language as a c or the c++ or the java etc so for example consider you are writing the program in the c language so this is c language is considered as your higher level language okay so when you write the program that program get checked through the compiler and step wise it get checked through the compiler so what are that steps in that already i told you first is nothing but the lexical checking then syntactical checking etc etc okay so when you write some program and in that program you write some sentences expression okay now it might be possible that the whatever sentence or the expression which you are write in your program that sentence or the expression might be the lexically correct Uh, or or that sentence or the expression might be syntactically correct but the sentence or expression which you are write in your source program for example c using the c language so that sentence or the expression may not be semantically correct okay what i am trying to say the sentence or expression which you are written in your source program that may be lexically correct that may be syntactically correct but it may be possible it is not semantically correct so whether that sentence is semantically correct or not that is checked in our third phase of compiler that is the semantic analysis now what exactly the checking happens in the third phase of compiler so third phase of compiler generally used to check whether the programmer has written the code and in that code programmer used to write the different instruction with the help of sentences expression whether that sentences expression written by the programmer whether it is having the valid meaning or not that is the role of semantic analyzer programmer which has written the code it can be a lexically correct okay if the programmer has written the code if the token can be generated from that code then it is lexically correct if syntax of your expression sentences which you are written in your program if they are all correct then it is also the syntactically correct but if that sentences expression is having the valid meaning or not who is checking that that is being checked by whom the semantic analyzer so role of semantic analyzer is nothing but what you, you can see this scenario here here is our semantic analyzer okay so semantic analyzer receive the input from the parser or the syntax analyzer okay so what is the output of the parser or the syntax analyzer yes what is output of the parser or the syntax analyzer yes can you able to see this what is the output of the parser or the syntax analyzer yes 
कैन यू हियर मी यस व्हाट इज द आउटपुट ऑफ द पार्सर और द सिंटैक्स एनालाइजर इन दिस फिगर व्हाट आउटपुट यू आर ऑब्जर्विंग यस वॉट आउटपुट बींग गेटिंग जनरेटेड थ्रू द पार्सर हियर सीमेंटिक एनालाइजर दिस इज दीमेंटिक एनालाइजर दिस इज द थर्ड फेज ऑफ कंपाइलर नाउ वॉट इनपुट इट इज रिसीविंग फ्रॉम इट्स प्रीवियस फेज आउटपुट ऑफ द पार्सर और द आउटपुट ऑफ द सिंटेक्स एनालाइजर एंड वॉट इज द आउटपुट ऑफ द पार्सर और द सिंटेक्स एनालाइजर who is generating the parse tree or the syntax tree which phase is generating the parse tree or the syntax tree parser parser so here you can see parser is generating the parse tree after a successful syntax analysis and that is given as a input to the third phase of our compiler that is the semantic analyzer this is the third phase of our compiler now what <laughs> semantic analyzer is checking whether the particular output a particular input he has received from the previous phase it check that means it check this parse tree and with the help of that parse tree it check whether that sentence or the expression it is having the valid meaning or not and after that semantic analyzer generate one more parse tree that is the modified parse tree or which is also referred as annotated parse tree now this annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree will be generated if the particular sentence or the expression which you have written in your source program it is having some valid meaning okay so here i have mentioned the semantic analyzer take the output of syntax analyzer that is the parse tree or the syntax tree as a input and check whether it is semantically means whether it is a meaningful or not by producing the annotated parse tree or by producing the modified parse tree okay now what do you mean by semantically correct statement or what do you mean by the semantically correct uh, expression or what do you mean by the meaningful expression or meaningful sentence in case of your source program so in order to understand that you need to understand for first what are the different kind of semantic error that get generated when you compile your program now before this we have seen the different kind of lexical errors different kind of syntactical errors etc etc now here we have to see what exactly are the different semantic errors which is being detected by the semantic analyzer okay with the help of semantic analysis so during the semantic analysis phase different kind of errors are being get generated okay or get appear in your program so detection of that different semantic errors during the compile time that is the main work of the semantic analyzer okay so here i have mentioned some of the semantic error examples which you have already you must have experience when you are when uh, you try to compile your source program okay so which are the different kind of semantic errors now before this in the previous video we have seen what are the different kind of syntactic errors if you don't write the semicolon then that is considered as one of the syntax errors okay if you uh, write the misspelling of the word in your program then that is considered as a lexical error so that is regarding the previous phases we have discussed so here we are discussing about the semantic errors so these are the common semantic errors i have mentioned which can be appear in your program so first is what incompatible type operands what incompatible type operands means what suppose if i declare the variable like this int okay int a okay and to this variable i try to assign the string ram what i am trying to assign it the string ram now tell me will you get the any kind of error here yes or no yes you will get the error what kind of error we will get will you get the any lexical error or will you get any syntax error or will you get the semantic error yes which error will be we will get 
what is wrong here in this expression yes what is wrong in this uh, this expression can anybody tell me data type data type means here you are declaring the a as a integer variable and what you are trying to assign it string string so <laughs> does the type compatibility is happening here no no so that is nothing but the incompatible type of the operand because here op our operand is what a which is having the data type you have mentioned int and you are trying to assign it what the string so this kind of error generation or detection that is the work of which phase that is the work of our third phase of compiler that is the semantic analysis so can you call this expression as a meaningful expression no no it it is a lexically correct it is also the syntactically it might be syntactically correct also but it is not semantically correct and which kind of error will we get, get generated for this incompatible type of the operands okay so that is the work of our semantic analyzer to check whether your expression is the semantically valid or not whether it is the having the valid meaning or not and it is done by the semantic analyzer by generating the modified parse tree or by generating the annotated parse tree with the help of the input it received from the syntax analyzer as a parse tree here you can see in the previous slide i have shown you the semantic analyzer receive the input from the previous phase of the parse tree and semantic analyzer does this type checking and then it generate the modified parse tree if the type checking is incorrect if the type compatibility is not happening the modified parse tree will not be get generated it means the semantic error will be get generated likewise i have shown you the different kind of other semantic errors also here you can see use of the non initialized variable sometimes from the programmer this kind of mistake always happens if you see this a uh, fragment of code now in this fragment of code you have initialized the variable as a int as i then in the function f you have mentioned the variable int m okay now you can see what is the error in this fragment of code can anybody tell me what error are you are observing here yes function is uh, void no your function can be void there is no it, problem t is not t is not declared very good use of the non initialized variable have you declared the t anywhere here no so that is also the semantic error understood this one yes yes so in this code t is not t is undeclared that is the reason here you will get the semantic error okay which is being done by the semantic analyzer that is our third phase of compiler then you can see the type compatibility comp <coughs> regarding the type compatibility already i we have seen the example here you have declared the variable as n and you are trying to assign it the string this is also the not type compatible now another kind of error also occurs okay another kind of mistake can also happen from the programmer like this here i have shown so here i have shown the string s okay and to the s i have assigned the uh, string s and d and again below what i have done now if you observe this fragment of code can you tell me what is the error here in the time string addition man so you are trying to do addition of the integer and the string is it possible no no so that is also the another kind of semantic error which is detected by whom which is detected by the semantic analyzer which is nothing but our third phase of compiler understood this let's see the next again one more good example of semantic errors you can see here now always there is a question on explanation of the semantic errors okay now this is the example i have shown here i hope all of you can able to see it correctly so this is the example can you tell me what is the error in this example yes can anybody tell me the what is the error in this example yes
can you all of you able to see this uh, fragment of code yes now tell me what is the problem or is there any problem yes or no if yes then what is the problem what is the wrong फंक्शन मध्ये सम फंक्शन वेरिएबल थ्री हा आर्ग्युमेंट पास केले म्हणजे काय आपण ह्या वेरिएबल डिक्लेअर केले यांना कुठलं यांना काय म्हणतो आपण व्हॉट इज द नेम फॉर दिस वेरिएबल्स दिस आर द ऍक्च्युअल वेरिएबल आर्ग्युमेंट्स ऑर द दिस आर द ऍक्च्युअल पॅरामीटर्स ऑर द फॉर्मल पॅरामीटर्स दिस इज व्हॉट आवर ऍक्च्युअल पॅरामीटर्स अँड वेअर इज आवर फॉर्मल पॅरामीटर्स व्हिच आर आवर फॉर्मल पॅरामीटर्स integer a and integer a and b now what is the mistake that is being done here they are not match pass manje itun tumhi pass kiti variable karta from here you are passing the three variables three but here to receive that only two variables are there hmm. so will your will your program will get successfully compiled without no. any error no no because there is a not matching of actual argument with the formal arguments so this kind of error also comes within a semantic error ata itha mala sanga ya program madhe lexical error ahe ka kutla syntactical error ahe ka kutla syntax error ahe ka nahi pan semantic error ahe yes or no yes yes so that is initially i said your program can be lexically correct your program can be syntactically correct but it may be possible your program is not semantically correct understood and whether your program is meaningful or not whether your program is semantically correct or not that checking is done by our third phase of compiler that is nothing but semantic analyzer understood the semantic analyzer yes yes sir. okay so same points in the uh, words i have mentioned here what exactly being done by the semantic analyzer or semantic analysis okay so here this is this figure is like this okay semantic analyzer also utilize the symbol tables so semantic analysis check whether the parse tree constructed follow the rules of language or not so semantic analyzer receive the parse tree from the previous phase now semantic analyzer check whether that parse tree is valid it is having any valid meaning or not if it is having valid meaning then you will not get any semantic error but if you hang if it is not having the valid meaning then uh, definitely you will get the errors okay so different kind of semantic errors already we have seen and to check the different kind of uh, semantic errors that is the work of our semantic analyzer so like we have seen the assignment of values between the uh, if there is assignment of values between the compatible data types then it is okay but if there is assignment of value between the incompatible data types means if you try to uh, if you try to add string to the integer then it is not okay semantic analyzer will show you the semantic error okay also what can be the done what different things done by the semantic analyzer like keeping the track of the identifier or the variable which you are utilizing the program keeping the track of their data types which you are utilizing the expression okay keeping the track whether the we, you have declared the identifier or the variable before its utilization so these are all the things being done by the semantic analyzer and semantic analyzer uh, does all these things with the help of generation of annotated syntax tree or the modified parse tree what do you mean by the annotated syntax tree or the modified parse tree so what semantic analyzer actually does the parse tree which you have received from the previous phase it does the some changes in that parse tree now what kind of changes need to be done by the semantic analyzer that will see in the next slide but you have to just understand output which is generated by the semantic analyzer is nothing but the annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree okay so uh, so next uh, you can see the other discussion related to the semantic analyzer i have mentioned here semantic analysis used to check semantic consistency of the code means whether it is a meaningful or not okay and while doing this it utilize the symbol table okay uh, in order to do the semantic analysis okay and by with the help of this it check whether your sentence or the expression is having the appropriate meaning or not so already we have discussed that thing semantic analyzer will check for the type mismatch incompatible operand 
a function call with the improper arguments undeclared variable checking these all the things being done by the semantic analyzer so here also i have put down one example here we have declared the float x as a 20.2 and another variable we have declared as a float y equal to x into the 30 now what is the mistake here is there any mistake yes or no in these uh, uh, two expression which you have written here what is the problem Is there any problem in the first expression float x equal to the 20.2? Yes. No. no. In the second expression? Yes. What is the problem? Yes. yes. What is the problem? In second expression? yes now in the second expression what is happening float y equal to x into the 30 now what is the data type of x float float and you are trying to add x uh, you are trying to multiply x with what integer integer right. then what what should be there type casting should be there should be required here yes or no 30 points, sir. Type casting is required. I hope you are getting the meaning of type casting. Yes. Okay. So this kind of now in, for this kind of expression, for this kind of expression, you will definitely get the error or the warning message that 30 should be get type casted to the 30.0, etc. etc. Now, in case of C compiler, uh, type casting is done automatically if you have experienced this. Okay, type casting is done automatically in case of the C compiler, but the compiler will definitely show you show you the error or the warning message for this kind of things which you have written in your program because this is not the meaningful according to the semantic analysis phase of our compiler. So from all of above discussion, we can frame the functions of semantic analysis like semantic analyzer uh, helps to store the data type information regarding all the different symbols or all the different variable which you are utilizing in your program okay which is there in the syntax tree also and main role performed by the semantic analyzer is nothing but the to do the type checking and perform the activity of type compatibility okay and in case of any type mismatch or uh, whether if there are no extra type of correction uh, if there is a no particular uh, uh, matching is happening between the operand and its type showing the syntactical errors that is also the main role performed by the semantic analyzer so showing the different kind of errors now in case of the semantic analyzer the semantic analyzer shows the different kind of semantic errors what are that semantic errors already in the previous slides we have discussed okay now the point which you are discussing the semantic analyzer tried to generate the annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree from the input it received from its previous phase so previous phase of our semantic analyzer is nothing but what syntax analyzer okay now here i have mentioned the semantic analyzer check whether sentence or the string is meaningful or not because given sentence can be a lexically correct or given sentence can be a syntactically correct but it may not be a semantically correct so in order to check whether your sentence is semantically correct or not semantic analyzer generate the modified parse tree as an output with some modification in the previous parse tree now this example we are continuing from the lexical analysis okay we are doing the processing on this particular expression or the sentence you have to just imagine this is the part of your program okay and we are doing the lexical analysis on this also we have done the syntax analysis on this etc etc now we will try to do the semantic analysis of this expression now for this expression symbol table like this will be generated like serial number variable names or the symbols x a b are there okay what are the type of that type of the x is float type of the a is float type of the b is float that we have to imagine okay for example then now in this example if you see what is the data type of 50 okay what is the data type of 50 by default here data type of 50 by default here is the integer 
okay now but the data type of other operand like uh, you can see the data type of a is float data type of b is float okay so if you try to do the operation if you try to do the operation of this uh, using this particular sentence okay where the type of x is also float a is float and b b is also float now does the type compatibility is okay here is there any issue related with the type compatibility in this expression yes is there any issue related with the type compatibility in the given expression yes or no yes whether the type compatibility is okay or not can we do the multiplication of b and the 50 yes no yes or no can you do the multiplication of b and the 50 no if no why integer because integer. 50 is the integer and b is b b data type is what float float so 50 here needs to be convert into the float or the real to match the type compatibility what do you mean by the type compatibility when the type compatibility will be okay when the data type of the b and the data type of the 50 will be same then we can say the type compatibility is okay but here data type of the b is different data type of the 50 is different so it is so there is a uh, issue in case of the type compatibility and this issue is detected by whom this issue is detected by our third phase of compiler that is the semantic analyzer okay now in case of this expression if this is the expression in your program source program and if you try to compile it definitely the compiler will show you the different kind of like warning and the error messages understood now for this now how it is being checked by the semantic analyzer semantic analyzer check it by generating the modified parse tree or by generating the annotated parse tree for such kind of expression now modified parse tree is being generated or uh, annotated parse tree is being generated for this expression like this now this is being generated from the parse tree which is generated by the second phase of compiler now how the second phase of compiler that is the syntax analyzer generated the parse tree or the syntax tree for that you have to refer the previous lecture so syntax analyzer or the parser generated the parse tree with the help of the grammar okay with the help of the grammar so with the help of this grammar the syntax analyzer generated the parse tree and the semantic analyzer make the changes in that previous parse tree so when the semantic analyzer does the changes in the previous parse tree that generated parse tree by the semantic analyzer is called as what the annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree so for the parse tree which is generated by the syntax analyzer in the previous phase the changes is being done in the semantic analyzer so this is nothing but the our annotated parse tree okay this is our annotated parse tree or the modified parse tree now what changes is being done here okay if you if you have just seen our previous lecture in that previous lecture you can see in place of this 50.0 in the previous lecture uh, where the output of the syntax analyzer or the syntax tree or the parse tree in place of the 50.0 there was a what was written only the 50 okay because syntax analyzer role is to check whether syntactically that correct or not but semantic analyzer role is what whether it is check it is a semantically correct or not understood so semantic analyzer has to convert this has to do the type casting or semantic analyzer has to show the warning or the error messages that instead of writing the 50 there should be what should be written 50.0 so that 50 can be get converted into the float or real okay so who is performing that role of giving the error messages or the warning to do the type casting of particular uh, type casting of particular operand which is not compatible with its surrounding operand so that 
that warning or the message is shown by the semantic analyzer and semantic analyzer does it by generating such kind of annotated parse tree or the annotated or modified parse tree okay so from this kind of grammar this kind of annotated parse tree or the syntax annotated parse tree or the annotated syntax tree is being generated which is also called as a modified parse tree or the modified syntax tree so so that is the uh, all uh, about the what we can say semantic analyzer okay so uh, in short uh, in the here i have mentioned uh, the things which you have discussed related to the semantic analyzer so semantic analyzer perform the main role of semantic analysis okay by checking the uh, particular sentence whether it is a uh, meaningful or not okay and it does it by taking the parse tree from the syntax analyzer which is the previous phase of uh, semantic analyzer okay so that's it regarding our third phase of compiler that is our semantic analysis okay in the next lecture we will discuss the next phase of compiler that is the intermediate code generation so you just go through the previous video and this video also and comment me if you have any doubt okay thank you thank you all of you and carry on with your preparation